All right, in this video, we're going to look at uh, URL pattern matching um, using the example given in KOWP because uh, a user was requesting this and they were getting the picture to work, but then they wanted to be like, oh, that's a nice picture. I want to be able to get that picture quickly and save it to my device. So um, with that said, let me show you how to do that. Here's a blank setup, nothing in here right now. And we're going to use the one that's given in KOWP. Um, you can download these pictures, save them to your device, and maybe you want to use them for a wallpaper later. Um, so there's three ways I want to cover pictures here too. Using it as a background, because I've had questions about a background. Also, um, making a picture a certain shape and never having that shape change. It's going to clip your picture, but it's still going to maintain the same shape and size regardless of whatever picture is pulling. And then also applying the image. That will change the size, but the width of the picture will always remain the same. So I'm going to show you all three of those ideas. And we're going to do this so we can cycle through these photos as well. So, you know, we got the van, we got the girl playing the guitar, girl with a dog, we got the road. Um, we got a fox. Some of these it's going to skip here and there. Um, I was just testing this out a minute ago, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and roll with it. So two globals we're going to create so we can cycle through these pictures rather quickly. Um, we're going to create a list global and I'm going to call it num for number. Um, you can get and call it number if you want to, it don't matter. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go up to 10 because there's a whole bunch of pictures up here that we can pull from. Um, so nonetheless, we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all separated with commas. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a number to that. Let's do a text global variable. And let's call this, uh, what, pick. And that's a text global. And here's where we're going to apply the code so we can cycle through these pictures. So we're going to go down to WebGit. And we're going to here to the bottom, and I'm going to pick uh, this one right here. Extract the third URL. That three is the third URL, but we're going to, you know, do some changes with that too. Um, instead of us just extracting the third one, we're going to do GV number. Notice I made my numbers go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, that's going to change dynamically, which is going to let the picture change much much faster versus us coming in here and, and manually changing this number every time. I'm going to show you how to cycle through that right here in a second. But let's talk a little bit more about what this actual code does in WebGit. So if you look at the uh, website down here, it says extract third URL matching the pattern, and it's extracting the URL. Yours may not say this. Um, save it save your wallpaper, come back in here. It may take a second for it to update this. It might not show anything, but you have to give KOWP sometimes a, a couple seconds to uh, update. But what it's doing is it's looking at this website, 500pix.com slash popular.rss, and that's what it looks like right here. So this is the website, and it's a uh, XML format. And what it does is it's going to do like um, pattern matching. It's going to look for a URL. That's what I'm gathering from it at least. And it's looking for a URL that has cdn.500pix.org in it. Anywhere in that URL. So if, let me take this away from it for a second. And notice um, we got 20 matches. I just typed in exactly what the pattern matching said in KOWP. cdn.500px.org. And as you can see, there's 20 matches. Well, actually, KOWP says that too because it will tell you the number of URLs matching that pattern. So there's 20 of them. So essentially we can make our global variable much higher than 10, but I'm just going to do 10 for right now. All right. And what that's really doing is it's going to pull that URL. So let's look at, uh, okay, let's see, 3A, 3A, 4, 1, 2, 5. Where is that one at? Let me refresh this page. And let me research. Okay, there it is right there. It might have been right in front of my face a moment ago. But look, that's the that's the very first one. But uh, with XML, I think you got to talk about the first one being zero, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong there. But nonetheless, that, that's the first one that we see, and that's what we see KLWP actually showing right here. You know, that same URL. Well, what does that URL do? What's the whole point of that URL? Well, if I copy and paste this URL, make sure I'm not copying the quotes, Let's see what it brings up. All right, brings up the van. Well, the van was this one right here. But now, by us creating that global variable, uh, GV number, we can change this quickly. And then I'm going to show you how to open it up, too. So uh, let's go ahead. We got our global variables created. Let's go back 
two, okay, three ways to get the picture. All right, background. Well, okay, just kidding. Let's add, first of all, let's add some font icons. Okay, this star, I'm gonna put it up in the top left. This star is going to be my trigger to cycle through my global variable number. So there's my star, I'm going to apply a touch to it. And I hope you can kind of see my stylus screen. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger, but I hope you can see the stylus pointer a little bit as I navigate. Um, my Wacom tablet does not like side sync right now, so this is the best I can do is just use the stylus on my Note 4. But I want to touch, when I touch that star, I want to toggle a global switch and I want to toggle that number. And what I'll do is I'll just do next value. So it'll go zero to one to two to three to four to five. And to show you that even further, I always like to add a little bit of a teaching aspect to things. So I'm gonna add a text item, bump its size up, and I'm going to actually let this show what global or what number we are on. So GV number. All right, let's just bump it on over there beside the star. Okay, now what we also want to do, the user was saying, hey, I want to be able to get this picture real quick, save it to my device, so let's add one more font icon. And this one here, it doesn't really matter. You can put whatever you want to put. I'm just going to put add to Q. It doesn't matter. Just something that I know to touch. Of course, you might want to make this look a little bit better than I am, uh, than what I'm doing. But when I touch this, what I want to do is I want to open a link. And the link that I want to open is going to be GV pick because that was that text global variable we created. Now, even though it doesn't show the URL up here in the text preview section, it should be okay. It should still open up the web address that is back here in our globals. If we go back to GVPIC, notice we do have a web address up here in the text preview. So it should work, um, and that's gonna open that link up. I'll tell you what, so let's just save this for right now. Let's go back to the home screen, and let's see what we got. So my GV number's at zero. Let's go over here to this and see what happens. We click on plus and it's opening up the van. Now, once you get the van, once you, this is your web address and the picture's clear. It's a high quality image and you can just right click on it and click save image and it'll save it to your device. Now, we've all probably saved an image from Google Images or something before, so boom, there you have it. And that's how you save that image real quick. Now let me talk about the image a little bit more. Let's go ahead and change this to one. So now it should go to the next picture, which I think was a girl playing a guitar. So if we click on plus again, look, check it out. See how it's quickly um, opening that link up for us so we can save it. Let's go to the next one, number two. Clicking on plus, there's the girl with the dog. And notice these are the same images that we have um, right here. Now what may happen from time to time, I'm gonna go to the third one. Let's see if it goes to the fox. Let's see what it opens up. Okay, there's the fox. Let's go to the fourth one. Okay, see how it skipped over this one? So, like I said, it might skip over some from time to time, but we're still getting these images that we see here, but we're not getting that one. I don't know why it skipped over. I don't really have an answer for that. Let's go to the next one, number five. I'm guessing it's going to do the snow with the logs. Boom, see that? All right, let's see if we get the mountain here for our next one. So I'm tapping my star to knock up the number up to six. Click on plus. There's the mountain. And as and all I'm doing is quickly cycling through these things, and I'm opening that link. And is that the next one? Let's see. Yep. So boom. Pretty cool, huh? Now that we have that, let me talk about pictures a little bit more with you. Let me go back into KLWP and talk about three ways of messing with pictures. Whoops. One way is to set that picture as your background. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm going over to background for my entire thing. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And for type, I'm gonna to go to image, and then I'm going to, I already have this set. This is what I was testing out a little while ago. But all I really did was, I, if I take this off, you'll have a pick image, tap that box, click the calculator, and go to calculator and do GV pick again. Basically, it's um, pulling that link, but since we're talking about a background image, KOWP knows not to actually open a web page up. Since this is an, a bitmap that we're trying to add, a wallpaper, it's gonna know to pull that image and actually show the image instead of opening up a web page, because we're not touching our wallpaper either. We're not opening a link. So I hope that makes sense. 
Um, so let's go ahead and save that and let's see if it applied it to our home screen. Boom, there we go. Now I'm back at the van because my global variable is back at zero, but if I touch this, I don't have to open the website. Opening this website, this little plus with the TV screen thing, that just opens the website so you can get that image real quick and save it to your device. But now if I just tap on this, that star, make it a one, since these images are already kind of cached in my phone, yours may not work as fast, but once they get in there, it will work rather quickly. Let's go to number two. There's the girl with the dog. See how we're changing our wallpaper real quick? And these are scrollable depending on how many screens you have on your uh, custom live wallpaper. There's the road. There's the logs in the woods. There's the mountain. And I mean, they look pretty darn good if you ask me. So let's see. Eight. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute for that one because I haven't pulled that one yet. So I clicked on eight. It's not doing anything, but give it a second to load, and bam, there's your new image. What about number nine? Oh, that's neat looking. All right, and then number 10. Give it a second. Let's see if it's going to load anything. Okay, starry night. Pretty cool, you see the Milky Way. And now if I go back, it's probably gonna load these very quickly now, because they're all cached. Yeah. So I'm just cycling through that, that star up here, that touched, when I'm cycling through that global variable number. But um, now, let's talk about this a little bit more with pictures too. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, depending on how long you've been messing with KOWP. But there's two other ways you can get images onto your uh, custom live wallpaper, onto your preset. All right, one way is we can add an image. Now, the thing about adding the image, let me position this in the center left over here to the side, and I'm going to bump the size up a little bit. Whatever width is set to, so right now it's set to 400, um, it's going to make the image that wide, but it's going to change, depending on if the image is like in portrait or landscape, it may be taller or shorter sometimes. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about there. So I'm going to save this and go back to the home screen. Give it a second. Oh, I never applied the uh, image to it. So I got my image there, but I need to actually go to pick image, apply the code for GVPIC. All right, now let's save that. Let's go back to the home screen. Now you're going to see two different images. Okay, remember how I said the width at 400? It's going to keep that width the same. It's the same image that we have back here in the back, but uh, now it's maintaining that width of 400 or whatever width you apply to it. But watch what happens if you go to another picture. Okay, the girl's still pretty much the same size. It's the same height and the width, but one of these is going to change on us. Check that one out. You see how this image is taller, but it's maintaining that width? So your image size can change. Let's see if some of the other ones do that. Okay, the fox is back to a shorter because it's like a, I think of this as landscape, whereas the girl with the dog was more of a portrait. Let's see the road, that's landscape. Um, that one right there. These aren't really changing too much because a lot of them are in, I guess you can say, landscape mode. I don't know why the, the clouds aren't loading up back here in the background, but we still have the cloud right there. Let's see, number nine, there's the guy on the canoe. And there's a starry night. So it's, it's squeezing that whole image that you see back here inside of this thing. But we did have one where the image size, watch the very next one, the girl with the dog, boom, it does make it a little bit taller. So how can you maintain the same shape or the same size every time? Well, what you, the third way you can add an image is to, I'm going to go back to root and I'm going to add a shape. And whatever shape you add, you can actually set the image to maintain or to show in that shape. For example, if I pick a hexagon, I'm going to posi position this in the center right, go over to shape, and let's just bump up this hexagon to where it's bumping up right against, almost right against there. So now we're going to see the same image three different ways. We're going to see it in the, as the background. We're going to see it as the image that maintains a certain width. And then we're going to see it in this hexagon. And the thing about the hexagon, it's going to clip the image into that shape, but you can guarantee that you're always going to maintain this shape with this size. So that's a good way if you're trying to preserve some space um, or some, make something uniform in KOWP where a picture isn't uh, constantly changing on you. So now, how do we do this for paint? Or no, not paint. Go over to FX for the hexagon and go to texture, set it as bitmap, and down here at pick image, check the box, go to calculator, and now let's do GV pick yet again. So save that, 
go back to the home screen, and now we have three different ways of getting a picture. We got the wallpaper in the back, we had the rectangle with the width that I set of 400, and now I have this one here. It kind of zooms in on the van, but it kind of, you know, it's clipping off all the other stuff over here on the left and right side of this one. Now let's go to the next one. All right, so as you can see, the, the background wallpaper in scroll mode, I guess you could say, here's the girl, um, but we're cutting off a lot of stuff. But notice the hexagon is staying the same now. Next one, boom, this is the one I'm talking about. So we're main, we got the wallpaper in the background. This one changed the height, but this one stayed the same. And that's what I want you to understand. So, you know, three different ways of looking at pictures, um, a way to cycle through pictures very quickly. I also mentioned a little bit about URL pattern matching. Um, looking, I, I don't know if you have to be in an XML type of uh, page, source code, whatever. And then I also showed you too how you can open that link very quickly so for whatever picture we may be on um, like if I, I like that picture right there so I'm gonna go ahead and go up here to plus let the road load up hold it save it download it and now I can open that and there's that image right there on my uh, device and then you know it's just right there in my other folders I downloaded the, the van earlier before I made the video but um, so you can quickly get these and be able to retrieve them later on your device there you have it. That's three ways to use pictures in KOWP, how to cycle through pictures in KOWP, a little bit on URL pattern matching, as well as um, saving an image to your device. That's it for this video. Hope it helped.